once again on a Monday night. David Van, David Oldham with me. David Van from SoonerPolitics.org. David Oldham from ConstitutionalGrounds.com. David D'Ambroso on assignment, of course. Yes. And we are we have a fantastic show lined up for you. A court update with the floating head, David Van. <laughs> Got to get him a Halloween outfit. <laughs> Uh, nobody needs Pay no it, attention to the man behind that curtain. no attention to the man. Uh, <laughs> but Shannon Kepler, the guy that uh, aunt his daughter's boyfriend, is in the court update. Also, Rick Hubbard. We talked about him last week. Good news and then bad news. This week, we'll talk about it. Court updates coming up tonight. Street graffiti ruled out of compliance, but then yes. the cardboard box wall was set up in defiance and we'll see what happens defiance or compliance and then the international national mask update that is yes. we are not the only people that are dealing with the mask this was a global attempted takeover and hillary was supposed to be in charge but she missed the boat and also local stuff one of my favorites uh, eskimo joe's the discussion about their name we'll talk about that and of course uh the mayor, the thing I'm all giddy about is the mayor's race coming up. I've gotten a lot of feedback. We're going to talk about the mayor's race and how we're going to have more input from uh, mayoral candidates right here on 3D Politics. Uh, time, Van, you want to show them the, uh, uh, the magnet? Oh, yeah. I tell they you can, what. We got a trivia question, and you can win a 3D politics That's right. magnet. Look at 3D that. 3D politics. Beautiful. I just happen to have a new mug here. Oh, yes. look at that. Wow. Yes. Yes. That's some These magnets, stuff. you can get yours by giving. Well, Tom will tell you the details. Well, we're going to have a trivia question. And we're going to post that later in the show. So stick around because the best answer wins. It's not always the most correct. We're always looking <laughs> for the best, best yeah, answer. Tom, yes, sir. you got to be morally correct. you got to be lined yes. up morally or correct. Right. really doesn't matter. Yes. Yes. So we do have court updates, but, you know, before we get started, I like to find out what's – we want to humanize you guys. Uh, both Davids are so perfect all the time. They seem like sometimes they're just robots, and you, it's easy to hate them. And so you want to humanize them, and I know you got kids and family and stuff, and we don't want to hear about it, but we do want to know what's been going on personally. I, I've got one for you, Tom. I tell okay. you what – you know, some people put all their confidence in the mask. Some put it all into hand washing. Some put it all into keeping your distance. And that's where I'm at. I believe that the best health, you know, in a, in a infection that spreads through the air is keep some distance. And I'm telling you, I love the fact that people treat me like a leper when I go into these schools. <laughs> I don't wear a mask. They just scatter. And I, it's a bet. And I'm saying, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. What about you, Oldham? What's going on in your life? Oh, just it seems like more of the same. Just busy, busy. Um, government yeah. just doesn't let up. So if I'm not working, then I'm having to deal with one thing or another. It's been it's gotten extremely busy because Constitutional Grounds yeah. has had uh, numerous calls for assistance in one area or another in one part of the country or another. And so it's kept me busy. Um, I went out bike I did some bike riding this weekend that's good yeah. boy am i sore uh, <laughs> always the lamenter you know the, no the problem is 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 you if you're not used to those bike seats they hit you in all the wrong places. oh my gosh wow <laughs> well you know all work and no play makes david a dull boy so i'm glad you got out there and did some stuff i am even though i'm old and and seniorish i still have a 12 year old I'm still raising children. And uh, last year we went to, or maybe as a year or two ago, we went to Destin, Florida and saw that sandy white beach and that blue water. And this year, just last week, we went to Houston. We went on down to Galveston. And I realized this, I said, we're going to the beach. And I realized she's thinking of, you know, like to tie in like hourglass sand. And you put Galveston mud in an hourglass, you're going to wait a while. So I had to manage some, expectations there and when we got there she said well this isn't bad this is a nice beach i said okay we're good to go <laughs> yeah. it's very careful i didn't want her to hate the beach when she got there so i had to kind of manage those expectations and, and while we're talking about you know business that 
economically, this is a very unique summer in that yeah. there are aspects of our economy that are exploding right yeah. now. I, I've yeah. got a buddy who's got a great disc golf pro shop up in central Minnesota. I was up there last month and he says to me, he says, Dave, I know I'm supposed to hate COVID, but he says, my sales this summer are twice my previous best sales of a previous yeah. season. Unbelievable. You, you can hate the COVID. That just shows you the strength of capitalism. Some, some brilliant guys are going to come up with some ways to feed the need. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm well, telling you, you know, people may not be going to movie theaters and, and thank God they're avoiding the malls, but they're going to get out in the park and they're going to play some disc golf or whatever, get some exercise. Matt Pinnell's got some great ideas for families to do car trips around the state. You know, you don't have to worry about the Nazis out in California shutting it down. You stay in Oklahoma. And I tell you, the housing sales, starter homes, this is the best summer we've had in probably 15 years. Oldham, what'd you have? I was just going to say, you mentioned the malls. Um, I have been to a number of malls and they are almost empty in some of some places. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and on the way out, like going to be yeah. shuttered like East Hill, the East, uh, whatever, yeah. Eastland Mall or whatever it is here in Tulsa. Yeah. Um, right. That kind of a thing, which, which only after what? two decades finally reopened as a, as a, um, uh, State as an office complex and yeah. redesigned itself. But, um, we're looking at that Bartlesville, the mall in Bartlesville is almost empty, mm. almost empty. And I was up there, had to be up there for some work and I just could not believe how, how many businesses were already shuttered. And another one was shuttering as I was, as I was up there. So yeah, construction places, on and the the only problem that I have with all of this is it it is because you know nature will will cause businesses to come and go and yeah. the nature of business to shift what I don't like is the is the the artificial nature of this that this has been brought yeah. about by illegal government action if it wasn't for that I would have no problem with you know uh, the and I would just say it's been hastened by it, but this has been a trend for the last three or four years. Malls have been going downhill. Well, yeah. malls, but but I'm talking about all sorts of things. I mean, right. the numbers of, of businesses yeah. going out, just going out of business. Because oh, yeah. Been, yeah. Been Van, 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 what was your point about the malls, though? Well, they have been going down. Yeah, uh, they, they, they are a high maintenance. They require a lot of overhead, and you need a high volume of people to sustain, whereas your average just street corner, you know, uh, st uh, storefront is a much cheaper way to do it. Just utilities alone. And the online services really exactly. take a bite out of uh, uh, the diamond business, the jewelry business, the mall yep. business, almost yep. everything. And then with the COVID, everybody had a new reason to go to yep. the online stuff even harder. Sure. Hey, I want to go ahead and move into the trivia question to get it posted, yeah. get it off my uh, list of things to do. Are that we doing it'll... trivia now? We're doing trivia now because David Van put together this magnet thing. Yeah. And, oh, I have a brand new. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a real copy in it. But you That's can right. win one of these magnets. And remember, here at 3D Politics, we're looking for the best answer. Not always the most correct one. Although, you know, I'm into correct also. So yeah. the trivia question, I'm getting ready to post it right now. Best answer wins the prize. We're going to announce a winner next week. You send your answers. I'm getting ready to post this on 3D Politics right now. Send answers right. to contest at 3dpoliticslive.com. This week's trivia question, what document is the following excerpt from? You got to see the pic. And now I've published it. We're going to see if it hits out there. See what we got going. And I'll tell you a favorite show here. You want to share a screen for us? Okay. Now, yes, sir, I do. And I appreciate you reminding me of that. We're going to get over here to the um, – and this thing here. <laughs> well, I was going to share it to you. Nope, it's not going to let me. Okay. But I've got it um, 
It's on 3D now. It Here we go. Be on 3D. There it is. We find it. You got it, Tom. You're up. There it is. This is the quote you've got to try to figure out the answer to. Unelected bureaucrats in the executive branch now write countless rules with the force of law and arbitrarily punish individuals who disobey those rules. The Constitution makes clear that these powers were granted to Congress by the people and must therefore remain solely with the people's elected representatives. There you go, folks. Just tell us where that quote came from give us the best answer we're going to announce the winner next week right. and you can win this invaluable that's right 3d and, and, politics magnet okay so that's going to be on facebook on the 3d politics page and we will also put it on our blog and mention it in the podcast you can send your emails to uh contest at 3d politics live.com so everybody gets to be part of this, whether you're part of the live Facebook people, the Twitter people, the, the uh, podcast, video cast, in, you know, all of them. This so. is not a speed contest. This is an intellectual contest. We're looking for the best answer, not the fastest yeah. answer. And you've got until next week before we pick our winner. But don't wait too long because uh, you may miss out. We may overlook you if it's too late yeah. in the game. Right. And we're just going to, if you want to, um, if you're sending it to us privately, go ahead and give us a mailing address so we can lick a stamp with this envelope and it'll Oh, you're going to lick a stamp? What the hell? Oh, this you is perversion. Open spreader. Send the and, kids away. <laughs> Send the kids away. Well, it's real hard. <laughs> the important thing is this will arrive in your mailbox with this magnet in it right next to that new credit card you got from the bank. So. <laughs> it's really hard to give stuff away we thought about this long and hard and it's taken us 15 minutes to give it away <laughs> good luck sucker right. see if you can write something incredible that impresses tommy your fine host tommy mckay right here on 3d politics live you can reach me all the time on facebook or on twitter at tommy mckay i'm even over on parlor at Tom E. McKay yeah. and McKay at 3dpoliticslive.com. I'm real easy to find. Plus, I'm always visited on Monday nights here at 3D Politics with my fine, fine host, my academics of fine report. That is David Van, soonerpolitics.org, and David Oldham from constitutionalgrounds.com. All fine academics in their right form. So, form so let's get on to the court update there yes. in the black robe that's right we're Which in the supreme court for? building you know, I, I i have to have to say you just were sitting you're sitting in the gallery <laughs> because all the real supreme court justices come out like a game show uh they're everything opens up they and do. they step out reminds me totally of uh to tell the truth <laughs> yes <laughs> if you remember the old oh, tell, yes. tell the truth yes and in fact uh, the tour guides at the capitol said they would each come in at the same time in their own curtain and they each had to have their own doorway because they had to show that they were each vote on that court was just as prominent as the next. And so rather than one at a time coming through the door, someone first, someone oh. last, they each come in. And wow. we all genuflect and bow, yes, kiss the thing. <laughs> this, shows you, this shows you how incredibly uh, important the Beatles were. Essentially, the Supreme Court was following the Beatles because they had to look at each other and say, I want two, three, four. <laughs> there we go. Now, I'm wearing the robe today just out of respect for what ethics means. And if you're a philosophy in one of these, okay? Wow. Um, this is what Southern Methodist preachers wear, okay? So I'm part of the Black Robe Regiment today, folks. And uh, let's get right into it. Four so, updates. Here we go. Okay. So <laughs> did you hear about the cop who shot his daughter's boyfriend? It Sounds actually like happened here. Set up to a joke, but it's not. It's a that's right. Uh, it's, it's a true it's a tragedy. Story. <laughs> it is, it is. A gal, a young teenage girl, was uh, sneaking around behind her dad's back, and had a a young man over when he she thought dad was gone. Dad comes home, and she's I don't know who he is, and so oh. the dad shoots him. Well, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. wait a minute, yeah. David. Just because you're wearing that robe. He knew full well who it was, and they were somewhere else, and he went over there to where they were 
and confronted the young man and ended up shooting him. It was way worse than oh, wow. him walking See, that... in into his own home. This no, 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 no. He in. went over to the <laughs> – to the boyfriend's house. Well, now, now you see, okay, he listens it. to Koonsweiler hold give it. testimony uh, in court. Uh, I read uh, the tabloids, okay? <laughs> okay, hold <laughs> it. I think what's happening here is we're talking about all three parts of the story that happened over a period of time, and, and it's almost like yeah. well, what happened was he well, he found uh, the kid over there. Is that not right? No, the the kid they went the the father went over to where they were, wherever that was. They went over to where they were. He was dressed in black or extremely dark clothing on the purpose. father. The father was. He went over there armed and ended up confronting the kid and shooting the kid. Yeah. Um, and, and he did not approve of his daughter's choice of boyfriend. And that was the, the entire point of the thing. Um, and had lost control of his family, obviously, and um, ended up shooting the guy. And uh, she turned him in. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. So, so where's the, the thing? Update? <laughs> okay. We had three mistrials. Now, some of them were just over stupid little technical things. On the same then, guy. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, and in fact, here, a lot trial. of people thought, Coons out there, what are you doing going for a fourth trial? But none other than Tim Harris said, you go again and again and again until you've got a verdict. You don't let a mistrial or a hung jury stop you from justice. You know? So what ended up happening? <laughs> Old yeah, what do you got on well, that <laughs> I, I, Let me hold off on the hung jury. But there were okay. three mistrials in the fourth time there was a conviction. Keep in mind, all it takes is one person who just says, you know, the man in the badge, right or wrong, I'm going to stand back to the blue. Well, okay, I, I believe in black, backing the blue, but I don't believe in backing criminal action. I mean, we That's all why need I back to... Why the, the, the parchment behind There me. you go, back the parchment. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So the guy finally goes to jail, 15-year sentence. Actually, it was kind That's of mass. Kepler. The guy is Kepler, goes to jail. Correct. Right. So, so Kepler Kerry goes to jail dead. until this week. All of a sudden, there's this uh, Supreme Court ruling called McGirt. And we all thought McGirt, you know, we were told, oh, no, this isn't going to change much. Well, Kepler says, guess what? I'm a uh, uh, Muskogee uh. Creek. I'm indigenous. This, that's right. And this is on uh, this is, Creek land. This is therefore this is, uh, Indian country. Indian country. <laughs> therefore, I get out of jail and you got to do this thing over again in some other jurisdiction, namely federal court. Now, as for what he's going to get in federal court, he get, could get a worse sentence. What if he gets 20 years? And what if they don't give him credit for time served? Now what's he going to do? Say, oops, let's go back to state court? You know? He wouldn't be able to. Right. But, and then, uh, and then Oldham makes a good point. We had a Supreme Court ruling just, what, last year that allows double jeopardy. Correct. You know, well, and, and this is a, and, and we have a problem here because we have, we have a constitutional crisis here with this, with this one if he wants to be retried by the feds. And that is that yeah. the, the U.S. Constitution says that, that what the, the jury decides, in one, it, no matter the jurisdiction, is, cannot be questioned in any other jurisdiction. So, so the, the point is that That's a good point. the federal court would have to stick with the state court's jury, but he's declaring that null and, va and void at which point, okay, what? So we've got yet another mistrial is what the, they're asking the Supreme Court to say, or the courts to say, declare yeah. yet a, a fourth mistrial, and this time we have to have it in federal court. So basically the jury trial would end up being nullified. Yeah. Um, uh, the, state, the state jury would be nullified. But what's so. emerging here is there is a criminal justice system for the average white guy, 
and then the what eight percent maybe at best of our population that is members of a tribe are going to have a separate criminal justice system correct yeah Separate but equal, you know, plus well, versus. versus. <laughs> no, well, no, 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 no. No, it's not separate. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> it's, it's, and, and here's the thing. We could be tried, we, we, we yeah. average white guys, could be tried twice, according to the, the Supreme Court ruling you mentioned, that allows for double jeopardy. The, the, the yeah. opportunity for you to be put in danger of life or limb for the commission, for the, the, the claim of a crime. Um, by more than one jurisdiction that's the right. double so, jeopardy uh now now mind you an indian cannot have that because he can only be put in jeopardy once only in federal court only right. once yeah but tom, here we could be state okay. and federal okay let me get back to tom's point about about the uh, separate but equal thing actually if you remember the former state senator rick brinkley was um you know, what, $1.8 million in embezzlement against his employer. In state court, he would have gotten sentencing between five and 10 years. He, federal court's a lot more lenient on white collar crimes like that. He got three years, basically. Right. So, yeah, it, this is the problem, you know, uh, because the federal, uh, you know, we have lost state governance over the Indian nations. We have, you know, and, and so now it's up to the folks in, um, in Congress to decide what's our standard of justice in Oklahoma, on this side of Oklahoma. So uh, now I see here Blake Barber's joined us. He didn't ask this question, so I'll ask him for him. Uh, does the father approve of the daughter's boyfriend that she has today? I don't know that she has one, <laughs> but the question. Tulsa world says that you need to understand this. It's really important. This was put in the story that the daughter has forgiven her father. Okay. But has the boyfriend. I don't know if the dead man has forgiven. GT uh, could dig daughter. him up. I don't know. Find out. I don't know. You know, <laughs> uh, you know I uh, guy. I don't Sharpton know. May know I don't, the answer no, to I don't that. believe so. No, I don't, I don't believe so. That. I okay. just know that you're not allowed to shoot your your daughter's boyfriend. Okay. You, even if you're a cop. Yeah. So that's <laughs> so that's the the Shannon Kepler update. We got Claire another one by Rick Hubbard. Yes. Broken Arrow says, no, you ain't getting your guns. No. And the hold forensics... It, hold, it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Some people don't sit on your lap every day oh. and know <laughs> everything. Yeah, so Rick Hubbard what happened walked... Last week, he, I was, was strolling through the park one day yeah. and yeah, in the middle of the month of place. March. And, and what Rick Hubbard? Yeah, yeah. So he gets uh, basically slammed to the ground, pepper sprayed, and... Uh, a pepper ball, what, 15 of them. He was on our show last week, folks. Watch the podcast. Rick does a great interview okay. with us. So, In summary, the guy was thrown down at the park for yeah. open carrying. They took him to jail. They tried to get into his phone. He wouldn't give him the password. They threatened to hold him into contempt of court. He thought yeah. he was going to jail. And then yeah. they said, oh, at the last second, no, we're not going to do it. We're going to dismiss the whole thing. And, it, and the way it lined up, he was supposed to get his guns back last week. We found out this week, BAPD is not going to give Rick Hubbard his guns back. And here's the court update to tell you all about it. Man. Very good. You're good. Okay. What I do? You need to do this more often. Sum up the <laughs> Every story. Monday, I so, <laughs> so the excuse was, we got to wait for the statute of limitations to run out. Uh, well, yeah. that begs the question because Rick was never, ever charged in court with any crime. Then which statute of limitations on which crime that he was never charged with Correct. Uh, has to run out? There's nothing to wear off. It's it, a phony excuse. It is the police department lying to their citizens once again. Correct. Correct. Wow. And, and what do you got on that? Well, let's understand that that he, if he doesn't have a charge, and there there is there could be no charge for this, mm -hmm. um, 
and and if they are not going to um, pursue uh, any of these charges, then he needs to get his property back. That's his cell phone, oh. his guns, any of the okay. other things that they took from him. He needs it all back because oh. it's his. We left out a component. Surprise, surprise. What led to the charges being dropped? McGirt ruling again. The McGirt, Supreme right. Court. Why? Rick is a Choctaw Indian. And again, it doesn't have to be Choctaw land. just has to be Indian country. Correct. Okay. Also, the comments on Facebook, I'm trying to keep up with them. Paul Tay has joined, and he says, tribal court, this is actually accurate from what I heard, tribal courts don't do felonies, only misdemeanors. I also Correct. heard that, and that might be uh, back to the Shannon Kepler thing. I don't know, but some of the comments will come in late, so if they, it bounces back, forgive Correct. me. Well, no, please. they, they – it would be federal court would handle the crimes. And remember that the, the Supreme Court ruling was only about the Major Crimes Act, the MCA. Yeah. It does not affect anything else in life. So it doesn't affect, um, you know, land holdings or anything like that. It's only in regards to the Major Crimes Act. Okay. And so um, it, it gives it, it definitely gives a double standard toward criminals or those accused of crimes as to how they're being treated um right so anyway okay let's wrap this uh segment up about court yeah. updates with rick hubbard then i'm going to reset and we'll move to street graffiti after this but what else about rick hubbard uh no he's he's doing fine he's you know there seems to be no sign that he'll be recharged by any other but he's entity. not getting his guns back how does he get his property i understand back? that it it appears it's going to have to be a civil a civil rights case basically and i would i would hope that he would go to federal court and charge them with a violation of his civil rights right to keep and bear arms yep and he has an inventory of what they've got right <laughs> I'm just a, I, probably yes. I'm sure he does. And there's yeah, no yeah. way it could go missing because they've got it all locked up. Oh, that doesn't keep it from going missing, but he can get reimbursed for it. <laughs> That's a simple well, and, question. And here's the other thing: for, he for... needs he needs to be compensated for the loss of use. Correct. He needs to be compensated for the endangerment to him and his household because he hasn't had the use Man, of those you... things. Which are essential to his protection. Yeah, how do you calculate that? Pain and suffering? Um, you know I mean, what? How do you calculate that? That that's you know what? If, 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 if nothing else, punitive damages for deliberate attempt to defile yeah. and and to take away his his constitutional rights. Got to be. And, it's got to be punitive damages here. And in this case, where are our Broken Arrow city councilors who I know at Thank times you. pay attention to our to our show yeah. and and some of whom are our friends um where are you in this why aren't you speaking out and actually doing something about this because yes. this is a a fellow constituent a constituent of yours who um right. who has been wronged by your city by your uh, government yeah no no david again the prosecution is done by a state elected official district attorney but the Hoods holders Wiley. of the guns the holders of the guns and, and the, the filing of the charges you know though that complaint by the police department is the only thing the only paperwork that's still there it's Correct. a complaint and and they are the ones holding the the quote-unquote evidence and not giving it back so right. in Broken Arrow, that's not a county issue yes. with that. But now the question is what, you know, what do we have to do to get the county to let go? Yeah. If there is anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, I, if I'm paying dues to a shooting range because I'm a gun enthusiast and they take all my guns away, they owe me for my shooting range. Sure. Yes. Because I can't yes. even go there anymore. Yes. Yeah. Do. Uh, you know, and if and and if you are going to utilize the range, and you have to rent a gun or borrow guns, then they need to pay you for yeah. you know those costs. And 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 Tom, that would be true if it was just an inadvertent accident that kept a person yeah. from enjoying their property. When it's proven to be a deliberate attempt 
to take away civil rights, then you must go beyond into punitive damages. Right. Well, they should have punitive damages, even if it was in good faith. Um, I, I wouldn't do that. Oh, I, I would, because because there is no such no. thing as good no. faith in this. In, in no, this listen, business. listen, if a cop, if a, if a oh, cop goodness. car, you know, he uh, runs over somebody's property, destroys their gun, no, that's no, no, an no. accident. We're talking about this instance. Let's but, not take so, it in. The, in uh, no, I, let, let, hold him. Hold him. Let Van finish and then okay. destroy his point. Okay. A, a, okay. Again. If it's an inadvertent, an accident which causes a person to lose, use, that, that. that's not necessarily punitive <laughs> because there wasn't a deliberate attempt. This I agree is. with that. Yeah. Well, the thing is that, that they will claim that they weren't trying to do anything to violate his rights. And I say it doesn't matter because you took an right. act of the will to do it because okay. you could have chosen a different. And, and I'm going to defend the police here in this. It was in Kunzweiler's court. Uh, it was the ball was on his side, and up until now, the guns being held—that's district court's responsibility. But now that that's vacated, from that moment on, what was it? A week ago or two weeks ago? The clock starts running as soon as Kunzweiler vacates his case. Then it's right. all on Broken Arrow. From that point on, that's where they're taking it away. Right, right. Again, but I, I still hold Bo Broken Arrow responsible for from day one because they shouldn't have brought they shouldn't have brought the case to the county in the first place. Yeah, I would say so too. But yeah, again, we can't always look for reparations in the past. At some point, we've got to move forward. Yep. Uh, we're I'm 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 learning to try to field some of the questions on there. Uh, uh, I won't be able to get to all of them, it's, uh, uh, but I do know that um, Paul Tay is saying, Rick Hubbard should file in Oklahoma Supreme Court to get his guns back. I don't want any more comments. I believe Blake Barber is talking about depreciation of the guns, and that's yeah. fairly uh, uh, out there uh, uh, as far as uh, trying to figure out a, a number. I mean, they're sitting in a... Anyway, point is, Tommy McKay here once again, 3D Politics, every Monday night. We've got big news on the mayor's race. Yeah. The international mask bit. Also now moving to the street graffiti here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Black Lives Matter painted on the street. Paul Tay has given me some link to the lawsuit filed today in Oklahoma Supreme Court about street graffiti. I don't have time to look it up because I'm doing a show right now. I'm sure there's information there and, and it's there. Uh, but but what do you know? Who's going to set up the street graffiti thing? What I know is that they painted it there. It was purposefully subversive, according to things I read. They 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 yeah. purposefully kept it under wraps, knowing, uh, admittedly, that they knew they couldn't get permit for it. Yes. Uh, and so they purposely laid it, and then it was uh, the idea was that it accidentally became permanent paint, even though the plan was to be something that would rinse off with the rain. And then is my bad, you know? Oh, my gaff. <laughs> Sorry, we accidentally made it permanent. And so, uh, and then it came to the point where people were like, "Look, we want to paint anything we want on the streets now, and any color we want, blue or black or any color you want." And then, uh, and now they were about to take it uh, down and say, look, we're going to have to remove it. It wasn't authorized by ordinance. And then they set up these carefully placed cardboard boxes uh, as pseudo grave stones, uh, headstones, as it were, for those that they commemorate as uh, dead. And so now apparently I heard today that they were going to remove it, but then it's been postponed, which sounds perfectly like G.T. Bynum planting a flag like Baker Mayfield, which means maybe he didn't plant it, and then he took it back, and he said, I'm sorry, I planted the flag. I don't know what he did. So what's the story, Van? Well, you know, yeah, uh, I have to give a lot of credit here on this to um, the, the Republican Party chairman of this county, Bob Jack. He kept pressing and pressing the uh, city council in last Tuesday. Uh, yeah, they couldn't ignore it anymore. So I got to give him a, a lot of credit for that. 
uh, basically by saying, hey, people are coming to me saying, we want to do another street mural because they're so cool and everybody at City Hall likes them. Let's do a back the blue. Or, you know, I mean, my thing was let's do Make America Great Again since that's such a wholesome message as well. But uh, then all of a sudden, you know, the city come, well, I guess, should we even be doing this? You know, they didn't ask that question for a whole month until all of a sudden somebody wanted equal time. And then it was, well, I don't know if we should be doing this. You know, so, this and I told. Our, go ahead, I'm fired up again. <laughs> I told Bob Jack, I said, listen, if Bob, if you hadn't done this and pushed this issue within a very short time, we would have started seeing mega pasted on the streets all over town because that's how fed up people are with the double standard in this town. Mm -hmm. Oldham, what do you got before I explode? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know that Paul was Paul Tay was talking about um, filing a, a, a lawsuit uh, for the 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 writing on the street. I don't I haven't seen it yet to, to know what it's talking about. But I would, that would be interesting to hear what, what we have, uh, what he has there. It is public property, and that uh, ends up being a big question mark, you know, constitutionally as to whether something get, could get uh, painted there. Uh, again, if you're going to, if, if it's going to be allowed for some messages, then all messages. Um, and, and I can't see where it, where it violates, you know, somebody's rights to have a message painted like that. Oh, it's know? a public safety issue. It's part of regulating our traffic way. If well, you paint now, over the if it violates, line. if it violates something there, if it's a danger, then absolutely it needs to be yeah. got rid of just carte blanche, just without any yeah. question. But yeah. the question is, does it? And, uh, well, they, um, they pay Uh, yeah, it's been a, been a couple of days since I looked at the picture, and I don't think I even thought about it. So that is street it, right there is really narrow, and it doesn't, you know, it's kind of. So, so maybe the whole thing's a left lane. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. it goes both ways right there. Um, it, it both ways. It's right in front of Kane's ballroom and all. No, of it's that. not. Like, Kane's is on Main Street. Yeah. This is on, on Greenwood. Main. You've never been, been to Greenwood, Greenwood Oldham. Clearly, so, <laughs> other side of the ballpark. Sorry, it's other yeah. other side of the ballpark. Ty oh, Walker no. never saw you there. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I might have confused what else. Rick Hubbard should file an Oklahoma Supreme Court to get guns back. Okay. Uh, well, so that's Paul. Paul. Paul messaged me uh, this morning and said that he was talking about fight or tagged me in a post that said he was right. he was going to be filing a lawsuit um, in defense of the um, of the writing. Burger um, King was out of chicken fries, and I filed a Supreme Court lawsuit <laughs> too. Uh, the point is, they're painting on the street, and it gets us back to what we've talked about. That seems to be a focal point of all, uh, almost every infringement, regardless of every situation, and that is arbitrary enforcement of the law. Yeah. If they would just enforce the friendly law right off the bat, then, then we wouldn't have waited a whole month or whatever it's been for the people who care about the symbolism so much. People are like, what do you think about that street thing? Do you think it should stay or go? It's like, does it matter? No. Does symbolism matter? No. Does it matter at all? Zero is what it matters. If you like it, great. Like a Christopher Columbus uh, statue. If you like it, build one. You want to paint on the street? Paint on the street. Well, but, but the problem comes in when the government doesn't enforce the law. I don't care if you paint on the street. I don't care what's painted on the street, personally. All I know is that everything gets confusing for the citizens when the government falls down on their ability to set the rules and enforce them. Because then sometimes it's like, well, I don't know. I'm not sure what should we should do this time because it's a friend of mine or it's a person of color or it's a woman or it's right. a, anything that makes it some other exception. Unless right. I want to go into the store without a mask and, oh, no, there's no exceptions for your face, Doc. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the, that's the problem. You've described the problem <laughs> with government 
at, with its arbitrary and thereby lawless um, yes. in, uh, choice of how it's going to run government, there is no foundation because, because with all these exceptions, based like you said, on personal desires and personal desires of somebody in government, um, or a, a small group in government. It's then, random then, nepotism. It's like you just, just random nepotism today, your family, and then tomorrow, I don't know you. Right. Well, and th that's the that's the problem across the board. You have described, you know, the problem with government in general and its lawlessness and arbitrariness. Um, yeah. As I've pointed out for years, are things that we argued against and condemn the king of england for doing and got us into war got us into the revolution because he was arbitrarily making decisions and his governors were arbitrarily making decisions in his behalf and um and there wasn't justice there can't yeah. be just if it's if it's not now equal and and constant Speaking of justice, I have to admonish Van. Van, it's unfair to the other players to have a large background shift during someone's monologue. You're gonna, you're gonna you need to. The, you took, took all, all the, the wins off, off a tongue. I was, I, I was like, <laughs> I was looking at me while Oldham was talking. And then your whole thing changed. And I was distracted <laughs> from looking at me. And, and uh, so you want to wait until the segment changes for that. Yeah, okay, amazing. mom. And, and all it's right. only because I'm jealous. That, okay. No, you can keep it now. I'm, like, yeah, I'm just saying I'm jealous. And that was no, a, I'm in the penalty box now. <laughs> five five minutes. But I'm going to have to upgrade well, at least my you took off your, your robe. So now you're not the floating head. You're not head. floating head. Uh, not the bobble head. Anymore. Halloween, I expect a... a <laughs> a, 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 a pumpkin head, but uh, no, I love your 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 green blue screen, whatever it is. I love your. I'm gonna yeah. upgrade my virtual background. That's all there is to it. You know what? I just bought a king size set of sheets. I figured if it doesn't work for this, honey, I got us another pair. TMI, stop it, man! <laughs> that mild porn is not gonna play out here on 3D politics. Hey, you know it's kind of like the guy who <laughs> thought he would try the clan out for a week. If it didn't work out, he got another set of sheets, right? Too, too bad the audience <laughs> isn't here for the after show when Tom says every curse word he knows. <laughs> Anyway. Okay, so yeah, let's just reset. It's 7.45, we're 45 yeah. minutes into the show. Tommy McKay, your fine host, 3D Politics Live right here every Monday night on uh, Facebook. Uh, I've got David Van from SoonerPolitics.org and David Oldham from ConstitutionalGrounds.com with me every Monday night, every constitutional question you've got, and Oldham has got the answer or an opinion. If he oh. doesn't know the way, Van, if he doesn't know the way, he'll make up a way. And then he is the man with all the plans. I, 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 I wake up politics. in a different place every five minutes on this show. The virtual reality <laughs> and background. I, I tell you, a, I, I remember uh, reading the story growing up, you know, in the same town Charles Lundberg did. I became, you know, <laughs> a student of the history of him. And he and Hitler had a little bit of a tiff because, you know, he would go over there and Hitler was trying to impress him about, uh, you know, what the Germans have done in aircraft. And he said, you know, the Germans probably are maybe the second most, you know, advanced people behind the Scandinavians, because Charles <laughs> Lindbergh is a Swede. And uh, now we find out in the international news that Germany has made it official. They're jealous of the Swedes. And Oldham has done more of the research on that. Oh, my gosh. I think Paul Tay just dropped off through that model. <laughs> Oh, that was a no, thing just, of beauty. I'm kidding you. I'm kidding you. Look, that was me. I dropped off. Right. Uh, so back, anytime you start talking German, you know, aircraft, that just, you, you just know. don't make the Germans jealous, okay? And that's what happened with the Swedes. The Swedes, uh, Swedes never did put masks on. They didn't. Well, they did not. Uh, Oldham, you got the details. I just got the jokes. Yeah, tell us about the <laughs> No wonder I was jealous. So tell us about the Swedes, Oldham. Well, actually, actually, it's the Germans. Um, uh, because in Germany, they have had a major uh, protest just this weekend. I'm sharing my screen now. Okay. So you wow, is Hasselhoff in town? 
<laughs> but the the beauty is that they really um they really had a lot of people out there you see the brandenburg gate mm -hmm. um up there at the top of the screen right in the middle where all the people mm -hmm. are underneath it um and so this is in berlin and you can just see the mass of people the 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 media both local and international was trying to say there weren't very many people there <laughs> and i'll let you decide for yourselves <laughs> about whether or not there were that many people there and um and i think no uh, it's, my screen's kind of flipping around on me but there's there's <laughs> all the pictures so you've got i think you've got plenty of people there um I don't know, tens of thousands. What's the uh, message? The message was that they were they were done uh, with the masks, the shutdowns, the masks, and all of the government narrative and the government falsehoods. Yeah. And so the protests took a number of different, had a number of different messages, but it ran the gamut, um, just like we're seeing here. And yes. there were protests all over the country um, uh, this past weekend. Um, or over the past week, and there continue to be, I still continue to see um, more more uh, news of protests popping up in my news feed from the various groups that I belong to around the country. Yeah. And uh, New York has started, New Jersey's had, had a big one this last week. Um, New Jersey has some news as well. Um, but anyway, so know that the, the, this thing is has has gone nation or internationally it's not just in america mm -hmm. but as right. america goes so goes the rest of the world it seems and so when we shut down they shut down and 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 so forth and so we if we want to get the world back open and this is kind of like just what happened in in 1929 with the the collapse of you know, the stock market and so forth, you know, it sent the whole world into a depression. But the, um, uh, in this case, we need to get our, get our selves righted. And as soon as we do that, the rest of the world will come along. Um, but they want to, they want to reopen Germany. Yeah. We have, uh, I've made friends with a couple guys um, at Attila's gym in uh, Belmar, New Jersey. Oh, yeah. OK, and they have had uh, this is I almost wanted to throw this in the court updates, but but this is more national news. And they had a number of uh, they had a win. They had a loss. They pulled some shenanigans. They went to jail and now they have reopened as a different entity, even though they're doing the exact same thing. And that seems to make everything better. Um, so just to give you the quick story. They were they they were um, they were allowed to open by the same judge that had shut them down. They um, were were declared to not be in contempt um, when of court when they when they did when they wanted to sh stay open and mm. stayed open for a couple of days. Um, they they then were ordered shut down by another judge who wanted to relock their doors or change the locks on their doors so the guys in a moment of brilliance uh removed the doors from their business <laughs> <laughs> and stayed open instead of shutting down at night stayed open 24 hours um, <laughs> <laughs> and so that was that was what they did they were eventually um the police came in at uh, about 3.30 in the morning, a uh, couple days later, and arrested them both um, oh. <laughs> because they were staying on site. And they, um, they arrested them and I guess reinstalled or brought doors along to install. Um, <laughs> government doors <laughs> and so, Where you get so those? they managed to get a hold of their um one of their cell cell phones when the jailer turned his back and so they snapped pictures of themselves peeking around the corner from within the jail so they stepped outside and then they peeked around the cinder block wall 
and where they were in, you know, in custody, and then they took pictures of each other and then shared them out to Facebook while in jail. <laughs> and then, wow. and then um, now they are all over the national news. Um, national and local news, New York news and so forth. Um, uh, and I think the Philadelphia, because the New York and Philadelphia markets really dominate New Jersey. New well, Jersey doesn't it, have it, much it, of its own news. Right. Itself. Well, this was the most heinous crime that these people, the shop owners could have done is they made the city look like fools. That's really what it's about. They humiliated them. You know? <laughs> well, right. And, and let's face it, the city... <laughs> The city has well, it's it's more the state, but the state, Tom, the he's state. making a good. point here. Oh my God, that was such a great transition! I couldn't even focus on what you're talking. About. <laughs> you he's making Tom a point, going. Tom. No, that the, the, it was brilliant. You are, you are correct, David. The 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 worst thing, and Governor Murphy in New Jersey has tried to make examples of everybody who would ever who has ever led a protest those are the yeah. people who get cited weren't you at murphy's house i yeah. thought murphy had you over <laughs> it was more of a yes. crashing game <laughs> i stood in his driveway until he had to come mm. through and then i moved because his car's bigger than me I think the um, question goes something like this. Are you now or have you ever? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the guys are out of jail. They're all over the yeah. news. Um, things are, are, are moving along. They're getting the kind of press um, that Murphy hates. And um, it, it may well be that Murphy yeah. and the Democrats are going to actually suffer some, some harm from all of this COVID yeah. stuff. Well, and I, want to, I want to encourage everybody in this. If you look, go all the way back to April with Rodney Howard Brown defying by continuing his church yep. services. In and, Florida. And, and, right. And then the, the, the hairdresser up in Michigan, uh, you know, or the barber up in Michigan, all over the country. When people have stood up against tyrants, all of a sudden a flock has come. Now, here's the thing. Politicians have not stood up to lead on this. They've waited until a brave soul risked everything to defy government, and then Correct. they came to his aid. Correct. Right. That's exactly what happened with Abbott and and even the the better uh, lieutenant governor in, in Texas who wanted to take um, uh, Shelley um, uh, Luther's place in jail when she was arrested for keeping her hair salon open in Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, they had not stood up and said, end the shutdown until Shelley stood up. And yeah. then they went overboard in gushing praise for her and things like that. But you're right. They, they were actually part of the problem. They weren't part of the solution. Right. We need people to be, we need our legislators to, to actually uphold the law, the constitution and, and stand up for these things. And, and guys, as I've been, telling everybody that I've been talking to um, the last several weeks is the way you deal with this is, is, is not to complain about their, their mask, uh, you know, mandates and things like that, but to ignore them, just right. deal with it and force them to do something to you okay. because that's the only time you're going to, you can claim harm. Van? Tom, Tom, this segues into a legislative update. Okay. Uh, I want to commend two lawmakers who have stepped up. Now, the legislature is not in session, but that doesn't keep some of these people from firing warnings across the bow. One of them is Nathan Dom filed a bill that's going to make it illegal if it passes for municipalities to continue these mask ordinances. Now, you know, it's symbolic. That's all I think it is. But nonetheless, it's saying this is where I stand. The second one. Senator, I think it's uh, more than symbolic, but go ahead. Well, yeah. Uh, Sean Roberts made a warning to the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder basketball team. Says, hey, you guys are getting a sweetheart tax break here. that We aren't given to other people. We should have never given it to you. In, in my to uh, insult our nation and kneel for the, you know, uh, the national anthem. Just remember, we can pull your tax credits anytime we well please. 
Well, and it, I wanted, runs, I wanted it, runs, it runs counter to our community standards. Why would we support it? Yeah. Why would you we know. support the, the kneeling? Yeah. Well, we shouldn't be supporting anything financially. <laughs> well, that's I mean, what Van said. They're robbing the us. Place. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm up. against, I, I am officially as of whenever it was <laughs> three weeks ago when somebody said, oh, really? You're against all nonprofits? Uh, yeah, including the church yeah. until nonprofit organizations are created and designed to operate at a time during what's right. called surplus wealth. We don't right. have surplus wealth. Uh, we owe China. Look. So I, I think no Oldham, nonprofits, and that would include basketball teams. Yeah, Oldham and I will agree on this. When you try to do, what do you call it, uh, building society or creating, uh, what's the, the term, social engineering. Engineering, yeah. Right. And that's part of what was done with the whole basketball thing. We would like to be seen as an NBA team, that we have big league sports here and stuff. So we are going to give them a carve out and treat them as a first class citizen and everybody else a second class citizen. Mm -hmm. you know? And I agree with Oldham. We treat everybody the same. If you don't like it, you know, here's the thing. When you've got businesses come in here because you bribe them, you don't have a loyal business. You got somebody who will move around like L oh. packages, and then when you that's did, gone, you move to it. You did not just denigrate the name of Al Davis. Is you know you. <laughs> okay, now he's done it. <laughs> Yeah, Al Davis. Boom. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't. I listen. If I were Al Davis, I would play that game too. Okay, I'm not blaming well, yeah. these no. sports franchise people for playing the game. Okay, but I'm just thinking you know, from as we the people, we should not be tolerating this by our Please. legislature and our chamber of commerce and our governor. Period. Yeah, and I'll say that about yeah. Tesla too. Tesla shouldn't get any special deals. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. No. I can't believe how polite I am. I have a Tesla joke. I'm not even saying <laughs> it. Hey, we're at the top of the hour, and we still have two more stories. And, you know, I'll go on and on with mine. The Eskimo Joe story and the mayor update. I have breaking news on the mayor story here. I'm very excited for 3D Politics. And my cohorts here, David and David, that we have scored some, uh, we're going to get the opportunity to interview some of the ideas of the gentlemen that are running for Tulsa Mayor. It's going to be the final thing we do. We also, don't forget, we put in the trivia question, go to 3D Politics. Uh, for tonight's trivia question, and you can answer it and win. Uh, we have the Eskimo Joe story, but first, Tommy McKay here, 3D Politics Live, every Monday night at 3, at <laughs> all three of us here at 7 p.m., and I've got David Van. David Recording Oldham. live from the center of the universe. David Van from the center of the universe. He can't hear himself. He can't hear himself. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can either. I just shout louder. <laughs> And he's from SoonerPolitics.org. Yes. Anything you want to know or ask, go to SoonerPolitics.org about state-oriented information. If you care about federal and constitution information, go to the amazing outlet of constitutionalgrounds.com yes. with David Oldham, our academic on constitutional expertise. And if you need a snide comment, here I am, you guys. <laughs> Always competing with me. Everybody's a comedian. Arr. So, uh, Tom, yeah, Eskimo, you're just jealous because the voices true. speak to me right in here. I am the voice in the head of all the voices in my head. <laughs> Boom. Uh, Eskimo Joes. I had one comment when they came out, and I thought they did it proper, better than anybody else. Which yes. Was, Look, what does everybody think? We have a name that's worked for a million years yep. by my estimations and uh, it's called Eskimo Joe's nobody really gives a damn and uh, and yet what do you guys think because I can imagine Stan Clark whom I've met and had to tell him to get his feet off of my grandmother's table it yeah. was embarrassing because I knew I will never work for that man 
And I said, I hate to tell you this, but I promised my grandmother I would never let anybody put their feet on her Tom, table. Anyway, you so, listen, listen to your patrons. I'm going to cry, okay, yeah. because I had to tell Stan Clark, owner of Eskimo Joe's, you can't put your feet on my grandmother's table. <laughs> and I knew he'd never hire anyway. He took them off, but I never worked there again. Point yes. is, this is an important man, and yep. he was smart, and he asked the base out there, am I pissing everybody off accidentally with my name that's worked for a million years yep. by Tom's estimation? And 90% of everybody said, no, it's a great thing. My comment, and I'll shut up on that, and that was, I said, if you can, and this goes for anybody uh, considering the name change, if you can't defend your name, you can't defend your product, and that's the yep. bottom line. Yeah, yeah, Tom, back in the 60s, I remember going to the homecoming events for my high school, and the night before the homecoming game, we always had a bonfire. It was out there in the parking lot of, of the, the high school there in a little gravel area so we wouldn't catch the tar on fire. But we would always burn in effigy the opposing team of the next night. Yeah, standard now, today, procedure. My God, can you imagine public schools today burning effigies of the sports team from down the road? Can you imagine Union doing our jinx Trojans burning an effigy of the Union Redskins? You, you know, a racist school, David. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, if, if they look, find the random locks of hair and the pen cushion dolls, you know, I'm, and I'm telling you. <laughs> you ask your own people who are your patrons that built your organization, support your organization, and enjoy your organization because that's who counts. Not the people who don't shop here or the other sports team, what you ought to name your team. Well, you know? what I, Eskimo Joe's has a pretty good hamburger back in the day. What I'm saying is if the crowd came in and said, Hey, you know what? We don't like the flavor of your hamburger. You really ought to serve chicken flavored hamburger. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> we, yeah. we apologize. I mean, you, you respond to you, the base that loves you, not the base that hates you. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Right. Because because your base, if your base loves blubber burgers, then you know, you call it whichever you want. Right. That's right. <laughs> but, <laughs> see, the thing is, when I think Eskimo Joe's, I'm thinking, okay, am I going to get blubber? I got a question you know, for the old. I mean, <laughs> I got a question for the old. What's that? When, 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 when I want to go into the store without a mask on, they can deny my service. In the 60s, the, the, the black people who protested at the counter, they just went and sat down. Did they, did they trespass? And why? How? Wh wh why? Why is it that the company? Actually, I'm a libertarian in many ways, and that is why can the? Why is it not that the company can tell me? Tar, I feel like it's right for Target to say, Tom, you can't come in if you don't wear a mask. They're like, okay. And if you're black and they don't serve you, they're like, okay. They're like, why is it okay in one sense to force the entrepreneur to serve the black, but not force me without a mask to be served? Uh, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry about that. That's fine. Um, uh, there is a a bit of a problem um, with with the way we have done civil rights. Yeah. Um, number one, people have have a have an ability. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that term. An ability to to um, discriminate. They don't have a right. To discriminate you could argue they have a right but it contradicts their duty to their fellow citizens and um and that is to get along with one another and and discrimination mm. is the antithesis of that no i wouldn't say you okay. have a duty to be a servant to everybody no, else no 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 not no, a that's servant what I said. not a servant the point is it's it's like i have a duty to get along with those people who want to wear masks well, okay. okay. Code, code I have a exists. duty to tolerate them. Okay. Sure. That's what toleration right. means. It doesn't right. mean that I have to agree with them. Right. As as you know, the homosexual agenda has so, wanted so to take. Coexist through toleration. Coexist with toleration is the duty of all Americans. Every okay. American. Association. And is that a constitutional duty you're talking about? Uh while it's not 
explicitly enumerated, it is inherent to the exact point of the um, of the Constitution, because the rights that 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 all held uh, or that the founders described um, in Article Four says that that every citizen of the state would be entitled to all the the privileges and immunities of all other citizens in all of the other states. Okay, it's well rationalized. It's the weakest part of your argument. What do you got, Van? Well, you know, I'm looking at the um, freedom of association principle. Correct. That I don't have to allow just anybody who wants to be a member of my club to be a member. I do have a right to pick and choose. Um, And I agree with uh, Austin Peterson, who was libertarian candidate this time four years ago, lost out to Gary Johnson in for the nomination. But he said the Civil Rights Acts of the 60s was good in that it prohibited the government from showing favoritism. But it went too far when it mandated associations of private citizens with each other, that they had to do business with each other, that they had to, you know, and now that that is the answer. Therein lies the answer to my original question that led us on this thread. Hanya, well, Nanya. By the same token, by the same token, by the same token. I'm not uh, jealous. I'm not jealous. I'm in well, rare form well, tonight. By the same <laughs> token, people should be reviled who are despicable human beings and and discriminate against their fellow neighbors who do nothing, do them no harm. So those people should be reviled and boycotted by the rest of society. We have that right to do that kind of. De- <laughs> also revile the despicable people who do not respect each other's freedom of association as well. Exactly. Uh, well, yeah. you guys are going to kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> well, this whole despicable no, thing. No, I mean, now, mind you, going right off the bat. Well, <laughs> no, no, mind you, it's out. This is this is a little more complex, and that's why it, it, we end up talking about it. Here. Sure. But but here's the thing. So I walked in boldly into a couple of places that said, due to local law saying that you have to have a mask, th- therefore therefore masks are required in this establishment. I walked in without a mask, and yeah. I don't care what they say because yeah. they are not exercising their own rights. They are basing it. They they are saying I'm acting as a as a as an agent for the government. See, I and reverse posing this upon you because it's in the law, and I don't I don't I don't acknowledge that law because that law is unconstitutional. So I walk right in, and nobody gave me a problem because they don't really want to deal with it anyway. They're just some of them do licensure problem. Some of them do, some of them in Houston don't. I got kicked out of a restaurant in Houston just a couple of days ago. Yes. I even tried to abide, okay? I tried to stay outside till we had the table, then That's walked right. straight to the table. They wouldn't even let me do that. Right. And so some of them, some of them want to abide, but I reverse the understanding, kind of invert what you're saying about how the restaurateur is attempting to pretend to be government when really this is nothing but government force taking over partial control of production, the means of production. Yeah. They're yeah. basically running the schedule and the and and the and the clientele business mm-hmm. of uh, the the operation of the entrepreneur. It's not yeah, correct. the entrepreneur being the government. It's the government becoming the restaurateur. Yeah. Well, yeah. they are doing that via their licensing arms. And that's why we have to end licensing because then they, then the government loses their, their means of extortion. So after um, I, was- I tell you what, a friend of mine, uh, Katina, uh, told a story to her friends on Facebook. She did publicly, so I'll go ahead and say it here. She was at Walmart and a um, guy in the next aisle was walking away from her, pushing his cart and just, you know, finally scolded her, put a mask on. Well, that triggered her. And, you know, Katrina is a passionate uh, young woman. And she, you know, she just said, excuse me, are you a doctor? Are you a doctor? You know, and she, well, anyway, then um, 
finally, she's leaving, and this guy, he couldn't face her. He just did the drive-by hit and took off. And then he ends up in the same checkout line right next to her. And he's like, oh, my God, you know. And, you know, so much for passive aggressiveness. Um, the next day, she said she had to go back to Walmart. And here's what I think it was part of management came up to her and said, you were here yesterday and had a confrontation with uh, another shopper, didn't you? So, yeah. And, she, and he said, I've instructed my people when somebody behaves like that man did, that he is to be told to leave. Good. So, yes. That's right. No. That's what's got to so, happen. So no vigilante no. Uh, in the uh, grocery store. No, I'm, I'm going to say this. And Bynum will back me up on this. There are people who, for various and several reasons, have medical problems with the mask. Sometimes for some, all the time for others. And when somebody says, hey, doesn't work for me. I can't do it, you know? Bynum says, just drop the subject, merchants. Do not try to press them for private medical information. Yeah. Respect them, take their word of honor, okay? That's what's being instructed in this town by our mayor. He's and being if, nicer uh, than they are in yeah. Texas. Yes, so I gotta give him Tom, well, did anybody uh, even ask whether or not you had a medical uh, issue? No. Uh, no. Well, I explained to the guy that I had a condition that precluded me from wearing the mask. Uh, and there's a difference between preclude and excluded. That is, I couldn't wear the mask before the mandate. And yeah. that didn't matter. I was trying to comply. I told him I was trying to comply. I stood outside, waited for the table. I was going to walk straight to the table. Yeah. I said, I can hold my breath on the way to the table. Yeah. My mistake was I should have walked straight to the table and had them thrown me out from there. Yeah, you know. Oh. Yeah, but you know what, Houston? Wow. We don't need you up here. Stay well, down there and we'll know, stay up here. Uh, the positive spin is look at GT. Uh, my favorite fascist being so uh, congenial in his uh, ruling of the city. I mean, he's allowing us to have that loophole. That is, if it's going to really freak you out, you know, uh, and you're really going to die, you know, you don't have to wear the mask. It's like, okay, yeah. you know, that's decent. Well, I talked to a woman last week who, you know, she said, you know, I, as a young girl, I was raped. And uh, she says, you know, when somebody is physically assaulting you, puts their hand over your mouth, holding you for she can't scream, and that she says, anytime somebody or something oh, yeah. is over, uh -huh. I can handle it so long. He's, and she says, and then the physiology kicks in and it's not a matter of will this is her body goes into revulsion right you know that's so uh, quite and, understandable yeah you know and uh and it's just re-traumatizing to some people sure again given what they've been through well it's just it's the entire thing is wrong the way that's being dealt with sure and and it has if anything it is prolonged the the epidemic um because yes. because dealing with it correctly from the get-go would have had people who were truly afraid staying home or uh and doing the remote shopping um, yes. allowing everyone else to to be out and about you would have had people who were out wearing proper protective equipment and going to the to the right ends to make sure that they weren't being exposed and you would have seen pretty much what we've already had. What yeah. you would have seen was Sweden. And, and you would have seen. Tom, that brings up my point. I posted on Sooner Politics a few days ago um, a, an article I wrote, uh, Masks and the Dangers of False Security that the masks are actually contributing in some situations for people to practice less social distancing, right. which is pretty oh, yeah. Far more. Now, social distancing can be anything from, hey, grandpa and grandma, stay home. You know, we'll go get your groceries for you. We want to protect you. Or we'll give you guys an early bird, you know, elderly shopping hour. We're going to open an hour early and it's just for people, you know, that need that more. Like and the elderly aren't 
yeah. just as contagious. Like like the elderly can't wake up at None 2 of o'clock in the morning sense. and need coffee. No, David, you're, David, <laughs> I'll explain it to you. By limiting how many people are in the store at a time, and then those people that are the at-risk demographic and saying, okay, you guys, we're going to let you in during this time. We're opening an hour early for people who especially feel vulnerable due to just the demographics. You know, I get it. I get it. It still makes no sense. Yeah. Whatsoever. You know what makes sense? It's, it's cruel. Maybe to- a couple people fewer, but not many. Uh- that goes to the store to commiserate and pick up hot old chicks and <laughs> you're totally killing the dating scene for the senior citizen at the yeah. grocery store yeah but if you scrub down the stores into the, the day <laughs> and then it sits overnight there with all go. the bleach and everything <laughs> I get and then before everybody else go. gets in you say come okay on. these people that don't have anybody to come get their groceries for them they have to come. We're going to set aside this time for people, let's say it's 70 year old. Hey, listen, there's nobody making them do it. These are shop owners saying, I'm going to allow for this that's, extra deal. That's the bottom line. No, force, that's force one way or the other. That's the bottom line. If you're yeah. forcing people around, that's bad. If you're not pushing and forcing, that's okay. Do anything yeah. you want. Do yeah. marry, day, dry, whatever you want to do. But yeah. when you start forcing, that's a problem. Yes. That's the problem right. with the mask. I was yeah. fine. You want to have a gay marriage and, and wear a mask? Go to town. Don't tell me I have to. That's yeah. your business. It's forced yeah. participation. It's what I say about what defines group. Uh, it is forced group association. And that is what defines Correct. the bigot. Yeah. And Tom, yeah. I will say, we called out shaming before everybody else did. Last year, Bynum was getting into shaming, yes. and everybody's nodding their head. Yeah, you tell them, GT. Oh, we yeah. called him out on it. That's we were right. right then, and we're right now. Yeah, my slogan was, if you can't shame a slut, who can you shame? That's the, <laughs> that was the one I did. Tommy McKay here with 3D Politics, all things vile, right here with Tommy McKay on Facebook and on Twitter, which is one of my favorite 144 characters of just – Argumentative teeth, McKay at 3dpoliticslive.com. Don't forget to go to 3dpolitics.com on Facebook. Go to 3D Politics Facebook, and you can win one of these fantastic magnets. And the way you do it is by answering our fantastic trivia question, where did the quote come from? Read the rules. It's the best answer wins. We're going to also tell you who the winner was again next week previous because i live in the future we're coming back again i've always got with me in closing one more uh, thing about the mayor's race but if you're just tuning in or been with us all the while like ethan gunther and paul tay and blake barber sometimes uh dave oldham dave van i appreciate you guys being here tonight one of the best things i get to do is talk about the mayor's race because i got so Worked up with Dewey Bartlett Jr. four years ago. I tried to take him on in the mayor's race. So recently, 3D Politics has invited all the candidates for the Tulsa mayor's race coming up here in 2020. And the original pitch that I set out just a week ago, hello, Tulsa mayoral candidate. Greg Emmel, Paul Tay. And G.T. Bynum, thank you for your participation in the re-election process here on our show. Now, you know, Ken Reddick and Ty Walker have already appeared on 3D Politics, and I want to get the rest of them on here. Now, what I've uh, done now is I have Craig Immel, who has agreed to show up next week at 7.30 p.m. on 3D Politics. So tune in to learn about Craig Immel's campaign for mayor of Tulsa and he will be with us and that is August the 10th 2020 here on 3D Politics live right here at 7 30 the show will kick off as normal at 7 he'll join the waiting room we'll bring him in at 7 30 and press him against public consumption yes van uh news update just a couple of items um epic charter school has been booking in new students at about a thousand students a day 
Nice. Over the last week, well over 40,000 students, and who knows where this is going to end. And national news breaking, Stormy Daniels takes another hit. The judge threw out her libel suit. Shaming. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad you brought that up. So back to the current Tommy story about the mayor. <laughs> Uh, because I'm all excited. You know, I really took Ty Walker and Ken Reddick to task and made them define their terms about resources and boots on the ground in North Tulsa. And so we don't let the vague roll through here very easily. Uh, when we bring Craig Emil on next week, I'm excited to have an independent candidate, somebody we've never heard of, somebody like me out of nowhere who wants to change our direction. I can't wait to see what he has to say. He's been very forthright with getting a hold of me very quickly to let me know what's going on. I know Paul Tay also has agreed. Candidate Paul Tay, perennial runner of for Tulsa Mayor Paul Tay, my uh, nemesis, uh, just last mayoral candidate. I beat him handily. I was uh, second, <laughs> second runner up, was I, and uh, he was at. Uh, hopefully. Um, uh, he'll do better this time running against some of his other opponents. But uh, Paul uh, Tay is going to join us as well as Craig Immel. And I am in talks right now with Craig Robinson. Simply, it's all penciled in as a yes. Uh, unless I just totally ruin it, uh, he should come on the show and, and we'll get to hear him. He said he is low maintenance and his people are looking for the details, which is simply just we're going to have him show up and ask them questions like we do everybody else. Van, what do you got? Um, I think next week, probably one of the stories we're gonna have to touch on is Jack Morris, guy who owns a, a horse uh, ranch here in the Tulsa area, and the cops just unannounced showed up on his property because they claimed somebody who I guess stole a car or something was somehow seen. They go into his barn and let the horses out, and the, this Jack Morris, says, hey, you guys, you can't do this. You know, what the heck are you doing coming in here? They beat the snot out of him. For he's running, filed a federal ooh, lawsuit. Wow. He's, he's running for mayor? No, no, no. <laughs> Who is this? This is Jack Morris, and he's hey, not you know what we're talking about? I'm telling <laughs> no, you. No, this he's, is the he's mayor breaking segment. news. This is, we're going to get into <laughs> the weeds the of it. Of the mayor segment here. Oh, I thought you were done. Do you? Man, hey, I've had too it. much sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I care a lot about this mayor thing. It's just a deal. Yeah. I'm not done talking about Craig Robinson. I'm sorry. You know, have you heard of Craig Robinson? Oh, yes. Craig Robinson, in my opinion, is uh, the, so to speak, elephant in the room that nobody is really talking about. Right. Ken, Ken Reddick has a lot of momentum that you're seeing. Yeah. Uh, Greg Robinson is a dark horse, so to yes. speak. No yeah. pun intended. He is the man that's got all the background. He's got the Terrence Crutcher family uh, behind him as a campaign manager. Uh, 3D Politics is lucky enough to have him offer his uh, campaign for exploration on our show in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I am hoping to have him on on a Monday night. If he will is unable to show up on a Monday night, I will schedule on any night he's available yep. to bring him on to explore Absolutely. him for as long as he wants to explore. I know automatically he and I disagree on some of the concepts of why he's running, how he's running, and what it is he thinks and what it is I think when I ran. And so I'm looking forward to exploring those things with Greg Robinson. I want to okay. make sure to make every effort to bring him on the show. Z One last thing about the mayor's thing. Uh, Zach Whitlow, he is AWOL. Okay, Zach Whitlow is uh, Zachary Whitlow. He's an entertainer type, which means I like him right off the bat. <laughs> but he's, he's, he's nowhere to be found. He says he's running. He hasn't responded in a week. Um, I know GT is really busy with all the stuff he's doing now. So I don't expect him to respond <laughs> very quickly. You know? if, if, so, if with, with Robinson, I'd like to be part of the interview. If I promise to lay off the sugar, will you let me? Be <laughs> if you guys aren't here, I'm worthless. 
So, uh, no, but I just wanted to make sure. I'm worthless we, tonight with the fun <laughs> sugars. <laughs> we didn't want to just roll through. Of course, I thought I waited so patiently for the mayor's thing yeah. to come up. But I'm just telling you, we have touched every, in fairness, we've touched. Uh, now we, we are in negotiations. Hopefully, yeah. Greg Robinson's. He says he's low maintenance. Oh, yeah. There should be no problem. Uh, yeah. And you, Davids, will keep me in line if I go crazy. Zachary Whitlow, he's nowhere to be found. Craig Immel, we got him coming on the 10th yeah. of this month, uh, yeah. next week at 7.30 p.m. Paul Tay, he's going to be here. We're going to save him for last because he's going to bring in the big uh, ratings. And then G.T. Bynum, we're, it, it, yeah. it, it, he will literally be low man on the totem pole if he doesn't show. And so make sure you tune in for Craig Emmel next Monday night, 7.30 p.m. Show starts at 7. Yeah. Tulsa mayoral candidate Craig Emmel, August 10th next week. Yeah. That's it for my mayor's pitch. Dan, what would you have? I was just going to say we're also going to touch on this. Look for this federal excessive force case against Tulsa police. That's going to be in federal court here in Tulsa. Jack Morris, and I know that's going to press buttons. So how long ago was that thing? Did it happen? Which one? What case is it? They announced it today that the judge denied the summary dismissal by the police department, said, no, this case will go forward. Okay. And what case is it? Jack Morris. It's uh, it's actually, there are seven people all making claims of excessive force. During a period of time. When so was, it's going to be a civil okay. rights thing. It's in federal is it a court. Class action thing? It's not class action, but it's just they're lumping several of them together. And I'm just saying, I'm teasing it because it came out today, but we got to wait till next week. Oldham and I both want to dig into the details. We're going to we're going to look at this because Good. this could also be a, a lack of a warrant case too. Whether they're pushing that or not, that. I mean, unless they're following somebody that they know, uh, you know, they're following a known mm-hmm. stolen car um, or something along those lines, then they have no right to enter the property. Right. So right. it could be way more than, than, than we're seeing just on the surface. We need to look into that. Right. So mm-hmm. I was just trying to tease that story. For... That I, I really laid out the understanding because I make sure – I want to make sure that all candidates have equal knowledge to the opportunity. I still yeah. have yet to send uh, kind of the dynamic d- details uh, to the Greg Robinson people. Sure. He has a team that he likes to run everything through. And so I totally get that. I just got to send them the message and see if we can. Hopefully it'll be on a Monday because that's when we have our big audience. But if it's not, we'll line them up uh, oh, otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So uh, that is all I've got today. Oldham, anything I've left out for you? No, no, I think we've covered everything Man, at this point. Don't ask. Man, you're on <laughs> fire tonight. If you leave out the sugar, you're in big trouble next week. <laughs> yep. Everybody yep. do the sugar. And thanks to Van for putting together our great new hey, mugs. You know these what? Are awesome. We may have some more of these available. We can't talk about it now, but we're testing them out, right? Yeah, these are red dirt mugs. Yes, that's right. And, and at the end of the show, we'll we'll uh, uh, we'll all do cheers at the camera, uh, just like this. No matter what mug you have, just come like on, all them. Come, come on, all there. Be, well, I got to get it in player. there. There you go. Be a player. <laughs> you once again, 3D Politics Live every Monday night right here on Facebook. Tommy McKay, your fine host. David Oldham, constitutionalgrounds.com. David Van, uh, that's over there at soonerpolitics.org. And we will see. Next week, I need decaf. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) On fire. Without the sweetener. Without the sweetener. (laughs) And don't forget to answer our trivia. (laughs) Answer our trivia question. And next week, 7 30 p.m., August 10th, Craig Emmel. Thanks for being here tonight, and we will see you guys next week on 3D Politics. Good night, everybody.